Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, September 24th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Keep in mind that these readings are timeless. So whenever you come across this reading and or whenever it resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time. Yes. Um, so just a heads up, work is going on outside. So um, at the space across the street from me, it might be a little loud. You might be able to hear it from time to time. Don't worry. They're just doing construction. I did notice today that um, they have completely removed all of the old building, which I find to be pretty cool. And for those of you that um, didn't see or didn't hear before when I mentioned it, the building across the street from me was numbered 144. And it had been sitting ever since I moved into this building, um, I, ever since I moved into the building that I'm in now, that building across the street, building 144, had always been vacant. And it sat vacant for at least two years as far as I'm aware of, like, cause I've been here two years, it sat vacant for two years and then they put scaffolding up and then they started tearing it down. And I'm assuming they're going to put a new building there. I don't know when, but I think that was, that's really interesting because it's building 144. Um, and <laughs> I just saw 144 on the counter here. He, <laughs> that's funny. Um, uh, but that's fairly significant. Okay. For those of you that are not aware, um, 144 is a, a number that has been um, associated with the Twin Flame journey. Officially, it's 144,000 hertz or 100, 144 kilohertz, um, which is a frequency. It's a frequency of unconditional love. Now, there are people out there, there are some out there that believe that there are actually that, that leads to 144,000 individual tw like twin flames um, on the planet. I don't necessarily believe that. I believe it's more of a frequency. Um, it's a frequency of unconditional love that basically anyone can tap into. And part of the twin flame journey, right, as, as twin flames or those of us that are, you know, stepping onto the twin flame path, it's about learning about unconditional love and integrating with unconditional love. Um, and then sharing that with the world and teaching others how to do it and all that stuff, and mainly by leading by example. Um, so the fact that building 144 across from me is being torn down or has been torn down and something new is going there is really indicative, I would say, of what's going on in the collective. Because I really do feel like all of the old paradigms are being destroyed, are being wiped away or being cleared for the new to come through, okay? And that does kind of translate into what we have here for our pre-shuffle. So let's get into this. So as I was channeling, starting to channel this morning, this, this, this energy, the first thing I saw was purple. And I got, I, I heard wisdom, knowledge, spiritual power, spiritual understanding, um, experience, having been gained here, okay? Which I thought was really cool. Um, and then some cards fell out and we have the King of Cups here and we finally have him facing us. Every time the King of Cups has come out from this deck, he has been, he has had his back to us. Well, now he's facing us, okay? Um, and it, it still feels somber. I mean, there's a nighttime scene here um, he's facing us. I really feel like, especially with this three of wands here, okay, I really feel like whoever this king of cups is, this could be you, this could be a masculine counterpart, it, it could be someone that you're connected with, maybe a soulmate, a partner, maybe it's your husband, um, maybe it's your wife, if your wife embodies more of a masculine energy. But someone has really come has come or is coming to terms with something i don't feel like they're really reaching out to, whoa oh my god 
I just noticed something. I'll explain it in a second. I don't know if this person is actually reaching out right now or if this is you. I don't really get the, I get the feeling that you're trying to reach out right now. I do get the feeling that you're trying to figure out how to do so. Okay, you have the nine of swords here and I just freaked out because I never I have never seen this figure I don't know if you guys can really see it too well, but I have never seen that figure right there. That's scary. That's some scary shit <laughs> um, Interesting, okay, and so what I'm getting with this because something a, a big part of like the twin flame journey and all that is telepathy and at night it ha often happens a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like when the sun goes down, the telepathy is insane, right? And so I can kind of, even though this isn't, it's not nighttime in this, in this Nine of Swords, I'm kind of getting a feeling of, you know, someone, maybe your twin, your divine masculine, maybe it's your feminine, I don't know, or maybe you're the feminine and the, the masculine is like standing out, uh, um, standing beside your bed at night, wanting to communicate with you trying to get in touch with you, trying to figure out how to get to you, but there are these nine swords in the way, okay? It's the anxiety, it's the fear, and both counterparts are feeling that. I mean, this is quickly turning into a twin flame reading, but it doesn't have to be a twin flame reading, okay? Take this as it resonates. This is general, all right? Um, so, like, if we're not talking twin flames, okay, let me just put this into perspective. For those of you that don't quite understand how to retranslate it, if we're not talking twin flames, then this could be you wanting to communicate with a partner or your uh, uh, a love interest or a significant other wanting to con uh, communicate with you, wanting to contact you, but not knowing how to do it. Feeling like there's a wall, a barrier between you. Between you. Um, feeling overly anxious, okay? This Three of Wands energy is giving me a feeling of, okay, someone has made their choice and now they gotta figure out how to get there and they're surrounded by a barren wasteland. This could be the environment that they currently find themselves in. It could be that where they have come, where they find themselves on their path right now is completely just, number one, not what they thought it would be, or number two, completely barren, empty. They may be lost. They may feel like they're lost out in the desert, all by themselves, with nothing but their own self to get them through, or to get them to where they are, where they need to be, where they should be, where they want to be, where they're supposed to be. I don't want to say where they're supposed to be because also what this Three of Wands energy is giving me is a sense of you're exactly where you need to be. You're exactly where you're supposed to be in order for you to learn the lessons that you needed to in order for you to embody this mature sense of, of, of emotional responsibility and emotional maturity. For you to get your emotions in check. For some of you, I feel like, and now this could be specifically for a masculine um, individual, a masculine counterpart, but you needed to go through all of this stuff to have it all just fall away, to, to find out you're surrounded by emptiness in order for you to start taking responsibility for your life, for your emotions, for yourself. And that's not a punishment. If I'm triggering you, sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> um, you know, this is, this is what we're here for. This is what we live for. This is what we come to earth for, to learn these lessons, to make changes, to grow, to do better, to be better, to expand, to ascend. And sometimes you have to hit rock bottom. Sometimes you have to find that you're actually surrounded by nothing when you were sold everything, right? Yeah, it's that whole bait and switch thing that keeps coming up. It's been coming up a lot for the collective. Look at on the other side, though. So we have this nine of swords energy here, right? But then look at on the other side, 10 of cups. Now, looky here, more barren wasteland. Both of you, both counterparts here, right? Both counterparts have come to this this, do we want to call it a plateau? We can call it a plateau. If we are talking twin flames, the feminine got here first. And now the masculine is on his way, is almost there, has just about reached it, but he hasn't. Now he's, he may have reached his own form of the barren wasteland, but 
they haven't met each they haven't met together on this wasteland together yet maybe may they may not have but it's coming it's being contemplated mostly by the masculine because the feminine has been here and to be honest the feminine has probably built herself a nice little hut she's got a cute little garden going maybe or she maybe she's she's searching for some fruits and some vegetables that she can start you know that are that are that are um natural to this localized area maybe i don't i mean i'm i'm, I'm embellishing but you know she's been I'm, what i'm trying to, what i'm trying to say is the feminine has been here in this space for quite some time and she's been there long enough to have developed some sort of establishment for herself okay this does feel like a good energy though it really does feel like a good energy i'm gonna stop there and i'm gonna reset and then we're gonna get into the rest of the message for today Alrighty. Ooh. Whoa. Okay. Wow. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I'm going to do this really quickly because that wanted to come out. All right. <laughs> Overall energy, we have judgment with the three of swords. Okay. Someone's rising above heartbreak. We have this king of cups again. This is why I took it because we have the king of cups again. We have the fool. We have the page of cups. We have the queen of swords. We have the three of cups. We have the chariot. Someone's coming forward working on it this queen of swords energy might be standing in the way but you know what i'm kind of seeing that as okay well first of all i'm seeing it i'm going to show you tell you what i'm seeing i'm seeing have you guys ever seen the never-ending story where atreyu has to go past those um are they sphinxes that shoot lasers out of their eyes <laughs> That's who I'm seeing the Queen of Swords as right now, okay? And if you're gonna be some ungrateful, loathsome piece of poop, don't even bother coming around. Queen of Swords, Three of Cups. If you're not gonna show some gratitude, if you're not gonna show some respect, if you're not gonna show some remorse, if you're not gonna be like, look, hey, can we talk about this? Or can we just squash this? Like, I know Whoever needs to say this, I'm not saying it's just the masculine. If it's the feminine, then it's the feminine. But this Queen of Swords energy is real. And she's not going to tolerate any bullshit. So if, if you're coming around trying to be all act, all act all nonchalant, like nothing happened, you better just turn your ass back around or don't even think about coming over, is what she says. <laughs> okay? Gratitude is needed here. Understanding is needed. On both sides. Okay? But okay. We have, yeah, we have the fool with the page of cups. This is the dreamer energy in the page of cups, okay? Someone really is trying to figure out how to come forward. The chariot. With, ooh, I just heard with the lesson of emotional responsibility underneath their belt. All right now. Someone has, someone, both of you, to be quite honest, if you're, if you have... If you're aligning, if you have a twin flame or you have a divine partner, whatever you want to call it, if you have a soulmate, whatever, whomever you're aligning with, okay, and this is resonating for you, both of you have overcome this heartbreak. Three of Swords, judgment. More barren wasteland. Do you see that? More barren wasteland. But we're rising out of this, and now we're coming together to bring life back to the planet, to the environment, whatnot, whatever, however you want to call it, however you want to describe it. That's a really beautiful message, you guys. I love that. I love it. Okay. Ooh, no more flyers. So now let's clear. All right. Let's get into the rest of the message for today. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to cough. <coughs> excuse me. Ooh. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, September 24th, 
2019. What is it you'd like to discuss with us today, Spirit? Three shuffles. All right, here we go. For the collective, Tuesday, September 23rd. No, 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 no. September 24th, excuse me. <laughs> September 24th, 2019. All right. One more shuffle here, guys. We'll see what we've got. All right. Here we go. What would you like to discuss with us today, Spirit? And my eyes are closed, so we're just going to feel through this. What would you like to discuss with us today, Spirit? What's going on with the energies here? Tuesday, September 24th. Okay, we have a little bit. We have, I think, one fell out. We're going to see what else we get. Tuesday, September 24th, 2019. Tuesday. Okay. One more pass, they're saying. All right, we'll do that. Tuesday, September 24th, 2019. What is it you'd like to discuss with us today, Spirit? Tuesday. Woo! All right. That's enough. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, overall energy. We've got the King of Pentacles here. Wow, with the Queen of Swords on the other side. Would you look at that? Both backs are turned. So if you think about it, if you think about it, like they actually, if you, if you want to look at it this way, they actually could be facing each other. Queen on one side, King on the other. Okay. And I just heard facing up to his challenges. All right. Well, this is nice. We have the King of Wands here with the Knight of Swords, Justice, and the Hierophant. But it's both backsides of the card here. So Justice, this talks about injustice, like completely throwing the scales away. Sword of Justice has been planted in that ground for so long that, a, that vines are starting to grow on it. But you got a butterfly there. And then you have this backside of the Hierophant where we're seeing past the illusion that, or past the mask, we're seeing behind the illusion of the Hierophant here. We're seeing, ooh, oh, this is great, you guys. We're seeing past the injustices here. We're seeing past the illusion. We're seeing past the conformity. King of Wands with the backside of this card. Now, let me show you the front. So that's the front. You see the salamander down there? Okay, that's normally, that is a sign of, um, normally the, the wand's suit is depicted that as having salamanders, yes? Well, if you look at the back of the card, now you have that big old snake, right? That's the salamander. At night, the salamander turns into this snake, and the king, it's like the king has this conversation with the salamander, or the snake now, in terms of wisdom, in terms of seeing past the illusions, seeing past the conformity, the social structure, and the injustice that it may bring. I'm not saying all social, so, social structure or societal standards or whatnot are destructive. Not, I'm not saying that at all. But in many cases, especially in terms of the Hierophant here, because the Hierophant can represent religion, organized religion and all that, a lot of organized religion in this day and age, well, not even just this, this day and age, for centuries has been used as a tool to control, as a tool towards conformity. Now, if you really want to pick it apart logically, okay, you look back, back in the day, hundreds, no, centuries ago, there was some sort of need for structure, right? You could totally understand why, you know, there were some controlling aspects here or there, blah, 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 but it was taken too far. It was 
use it was sold as a way of keeping everyone safe and i guess it did in a sort of way but then ultimately it became just a tool of conformity a tool to literally control the masses and then you you come to this day and age and now we're here in the united states and this country was built on one of the core principles of this country in the beginning was the separation of church and state and what do we have now not much of that anymore, huh? Okay. So this is what you're coming to terms with, if this is you. Or this may be what your counterpart is coming to terms with. But with this Knight of Swords energy here, there is a conversation that wants to come through, but it's not ready yet. That's what I'm feeling. It's just not quite ready yet because there is a, I, yeah, there is a bit of inner counsel that's happening here, okay? For whomever I'm channeling for here. But the good thing here is the counterparts are facing each other. Even though they may still be on their respective sides, like the feminine is still in the queen of swords energy, the masculine is still in the king of pentacles energy. Okay. But you're at least facing each other. Energetically speaking, you're at least giving each other the chance to come forward, to hear each other out, to speak truth, what not, whatever. And I don't really feel like the Queen of Swords is trying to look for a fight, but, but she is ready to throw down if she needs to. Hey, don't shoot the messenger, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, um, there's another aspect of this King of Pentacles energy. Um, in this deck, this card is described as this king not doesn't necessarily feel like he needs to do any more soul searching. And that's coming up, but what I'm hearing is someone is coming to terms with that because here is the more is is greater soul searching in this king of wands energy, okay? You could definitely see that in as part of it all right so i want to move into the clair into some classif classification geez clarification now <laughs> i guess it could be classification right great uh, a deeper cla whatever eric whatever <laughs> i crack myself up sometimes and i do want to I do want to speak to both of these specifically. So I'm going to do it this way. Um, I'm going to start with the Golden Universal Tarot because I want to get direct messages from spirit for the masculine individuals that are going through this, that are trying to understand what this has been for you. Um, spirit wants to speak directly to you in terms of that to help bring you some greater clarity here. So that's why I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot. I use this deck. I use this deck when I'm channeling when when spirit like really wants to speak directly, and then the rest of it is just like channeling the energies, if that makes sense. So for the masculines here, they're really eager to speak to you about this because you're ready to hear it you're ready to listen you're ready to understand it doesn't mean you're going to understand right away but you're at least ready to start hearing the message and start integrating it putting it into place putting it into where it, it, it belongs for you last shuffle and then what does spirit have for you here hierophant and justice what do you want to say about this spirit? I'm hearing coming. Oh, good gracious. I'm hearing coming to terms with it. Wow. Wow. We have the King of Cups. I'm sorry, the King of Pentacles, the Queen of Cups, and the Two of Pentacles with the Nine of Wands. Ooh, overall energy of judgment. Guys, this is such good energy. This is such good energy. Okay, so check it out, masculines. You, right now, are in the process of integrating your emotions, or we could say your feminine side. 
okay? King of Pentacles, Queen of Cups. This is you. Now, you could say, okay, this was influenced by your feminine counterpart here, if, that, if that's what resonates with you. Okay, fine. Um, sure, but this is you. This is your internal reality here. This is you being the King of Pentacles who, to be quite honest, feels very stern, very rigid, very dry, maybe not too emotional. He just feels like, you know, like a rock, you know, like, and that could be a good thing, right? Solid like a rock, sure, but also like dead like a rock. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like lifeless like a rock, um, uninteresting, uh, boring, um, you know, fixed, old fashioned even, we could say. Anything that would describe something like that, right? But now the water aspect is coming in and it's kind of loosening you up a little bit. Maybe making you a little muddy. Ain't nothing wrong with that, right? Two of Pentacles, bringing this into balance, okay? Now, Nine of Wands. What Spirit is saying here is persevere. Do not give up. You have come so far and we are so proud of you, says Spirit. Like, leaps and bounds a plenty <laughs> okay you're answering the call you're hearing the call you're you're being reborn you're getting a second chance and what some of them and what they're saying here in terms of this second chance that judgment is representing here this is the this is the second chance that you needed and always wanted but refused to step into because you refused to do any sort of soul searching or integration of your, your emotions. It wasn't until you stopped fighting and started listening to your heart, listening to yourself, listening to your inner divine feminine even, that just came out. It wasn't until you started doing that that you were able to start bringing this into balance, okay? Oh my God, that's amazing, you guys. That is so awesome. Okay. So now, let's talk about this here. Spirit wants to speak with you directly, masculines. So we're just gonna keep using the Golden Universal deck. So let's talk about this King of Wands with the, with the Knight of Swords. What is this inner dialogue that you're having? Um, advice on how to come forward and say something even? Let's see what you got, Spirit. Eight of Pentacles, Five of Cups. Ooh, okay. Okay, Two of Wands. Yes, it's time to make a decision. You have, oh goodness, this is a big old stack of cards. You have the Eight of Pentacles, you have the Five of Cups, you have Temperance, you have the Ten of Cups, you have Seven of Wands, the eight, Ten of Wands, the Eight of Wands, the Fool, the Knight of Wands, and the Nine of Swords. There's that anxiety again. You really want to say something, don't you? But you don't know how to do it. All right. Let's start here. We're gonna start here. Eight of Pentacles, Five of Cups, Temperance. All right, look. You're facing this right now. Five of Cups. Three of those cups have spilled. And that can absolutely represent society, all right? Because the Three of Cups does represent social get-togethers, celebrations, family, friends, that kind of thing, right? soul family even, but what we often like to say as card readers with this card is those three cups, whatever spilled out of those three cups was toxic. You didn't need it anyway. And so now what you're left with is the two of cups, all is not lost. And that is what's being integrated here, being balanced here, being tempered here in temperance, yes, between the king and the queen of pentacles. This is happening internally. We're talking, we're talking internally, 
Okay, this doesn't really. We're not really talking about your counterpart here. Your counterpart may have influenced this, but we're talking about you. Okay, this is the work that's going on within you. And yes, we are most like mostly speaking to a masculine entity, whether you're a man or a woman. All right. Um, okay, so this is the work that you're doing right now, your craftsmanship. This is the work that's happening. You're integrating your individuality, your own self, right? You are balancing yourself out. You're coming to terms with things. You need to be patient with yourself, all right? This is because this is hard work. Eight of Pentacles does represent hard work. It can represent mundane work because this guy, this this guy in the Eight of Pentacles is just toiling away, making those eight identical pentacles one after another, working tirelessly, day and night even, okay? Really putting in the effort, which is good, all right? You have the Ten of Cups, but you also have the Ten of Wands and the Seven of Wands, in the way of that. What I'm hearing, what I'm picking up on, what, I'm, what the Spirit is saying here is your burdens, the Ten of Wands, all of the over, oh, wow, all of the over responsibilities that you have accepted. I don't even know if that's like grammatically correct, but that's literally what I just heard. That is what's standing in your way. That's blocking you from your Ten of Cups. And right now, with this integration process, you're learning how to release that, okay? Here's the communication again. Eight of Wands with the Fool taking a leap of faith and the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands, I do see the Knight of Wands as coming forward passionately, wanting to speak truth, wanting to have a conversation, wanting to I don't know, squash things even, if you will. I don't know how much of that's gonna happen. I, I, I don't know how much of it is necessary to happen at this point. Maybe it's just, you gotta put the past behind you and just be like, fuck it, let's just start over. But there's that Nine of Swords. You're focused on the worst case scenario. You're focused on rejection. You're really afraid of rejection, aren't you? You don't have to be. I just heard the Divine Feminine is not going to reject you forever. Should you show up and take the proper steps. Now, for some of you, and this is why, this is where, okay, this is where this is coming from. And actually, I'm going to get more clarification on the Nine of Swords specifically. But for some of you, you want to be able to just ride on in all hot and heavy dropping truth bombs here and there and expect things to just breeze over and everything's going to be fine. I'm here to tell you that's probably n not the most likely aspect or the, not the most likely outcome. You're going to have to work at it. You're going to have to try. You're going to have to put forth effort. You're going to have to do more than just talk. You're going to have to do more than just spew pretty words. You're gonna have to do more than just eloquently, I, I don't know. You're gonna have to be more than eloquent. You're gonna have to follow through. You're gonna have to put your money where your mouth is. Actions speak louder than words. You could talk out your ass all you want, but if your actions aren't in alignment with it, that, count, that, that divine feminine counterpart of yours is going to see right through it and she's going to cut you out so fast. But see, that's what you're afraid of. You don't have to be afraid of this. You just have to step up and do what it is you're... I'm here. I'm, I'm, this is a direct channel. Do what it is you're called to do. Do what it is you're guided to do. I want to get a little more clarity on this Nine of Swords for you guys before we move on to the oracle. Talk about this nine of swords energy. One more shuffle here. Okay. 
And it's not even like, it's, <sighs> okay, wait. I was gonna say, it's not even like she's trying to make this difficult for you. She is and she isn't. She might be really enjoying herself right now. She might be really enjoying this freedom that she's come into this ability to say, look, buddy, I don't give a damn whether you come back or not. I don't give a damn whether we actually have this relationship or not. If you're not gonna come correct, you can just fuck off. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Literally, excuse my language, but the Queen of Swords is saying, I don't give a flying fuck. All I care about is whether you're going to respect me, whether you're going to treat me properly, whether you're going to remain being a toxic asshole or whether we're actually gonna clean this up and do this for real. Right? But see, that's also part of what you're afraid of too. Because the whole reason that you two are aligning with each other is because She's not chasing you any longer. She straight up doesn't care. And now you're kind of like, well, now what do I do? Because actually now I, I do care about this. So maybe I should do something about this. But what if she rejects me? What if she never wants to speak with me again? What if she never wants to see me again? Well, there's only one way to find out, number one. Number two, be honest, be real. Let time pass. Don't expect things to just happen overnight, right? Okay, Nine of Swords. Let's get some more clarity on this Nine of Swords for you guys. Hmm. We may have already gotten the message. Let me see. I'm gonna try one more time here. I'm gonna try this one more time and we'll see. Any any guidance? Ooh. There it is right there. Look, Ten of Swords. There's the King of Pentacles again. Seven of Swords. Uh-oh, the Tower. And the Two of Pentacles again. This is the third time the King of Pentacles has come out. You could be an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Doesn't have to be though. I feel like you're going through a secret tower moment. Like on the surface, you're, you're good. You're financially stable, you're doing your thing, you're, you're same old, same old. Nothing, nothing to see here, keep it moving. But on the inside, on the inside. Oh, this is the 10 of wands. This is the 10 of wands again. Okay, I thought that was the 10 of swords. It's the 10 of wands. I get confused with this. This is the, um, the uh, wild unknown tarot and sometimes the wands and the sword suit um, look similar. But anyway, this is the Ten of Wands. And I just heard you're releasing the old paradigm. You're releasing all the burdens, all the stress, all the drama, all the things you never needed to accept to begin with because they were never yours to carry. But you did it anyway. Why? Because you were being a good masculine figure. You were being what... You were being a man. You were being the masculine, you were, do, you, were being, you were taking care of business. And I'm not trying to mock you, but and what you're realizing here is you don't need to do that. I mean, yeah, you still wanna be able to take care of the family, take care of business, do what needs to be, do, you know, be the masculine energy, okay. But not like this. Seven of Swords, Ten of Wands. Seven of Swords is deception. Seven of Swords, Seven of Swords is lying, cheating, backstabbing, stealing, trying to get away with something. Keeping something hidden. You are going through a tower moment right now and you're probably really successful at keeping it hidden. Don't worry about it. Balance is coming into play. 
And I love that this Two of Pentacles has a butterfly on it because it kind of represents, you know, transformation also. This is, and that's what we're getting with this Two of Pentacles here. Transformation, because you're balancing your masculine and your feminine aspects. And it's perfect that it's coming out as the Queen of Cups, because the Queen of Cups is like the emotional master when she's balanced. And she's also pretty psychic and intuitive. Like other than the High Priestess, she's, she and the High Priestess are the most intuitive or psychically attuned individuals in the deck, okay? So you actually may even be opening up to your psychic abilities, to your empathic abilities. Everybody's got them. Everybody has them, okay? But you might be waking up to that right now. It's beautiful, yes, but damn, is it tumultuous. Let me tell y'all, for those of us that have been through this, psychic awakenings are not cute. That shit is jarring, okay? That shit's fucking scary. Ooh. Le ooh, so yeah, okay, You, if you are going through a psychic awakening right now, you really might be going through it. And at, if, it, especially since, ooh, I'm getting a download. Whoa, especially since the King of Pentacles has come out three times here, this really might be shaking you up. Because the King of Pentacles is solid, his foundation is fixed. I mean, he is the, I mean, all fixed signs are fairly stubborn, but, the, but and I say that in a good way, I don't mean that derog in a derogatory way, but like fairly stubborn in the sense that they have, the direction has been chosen, they are moving in that direction, they are staying on path and nothing is going to sway them. That is ideal, okay? In the right circumstances, that's exactly what you need. But take that into account now with the flowiness, okay, of the Queen of Cups or of, of psychic ability or of psychic energy or of emotions, right? and you're completely loosening the hold, the groundedness that this King of Pentacles embodies. This is not a bad thing. You're learning to loosen up. Like I'm literally seeing the earth, I'm seeing like a, a patch of earth that's just being, that has been so like, like dry and hard and just rigid. And it's, and now water's seeping in and kind of like, loosening up a little bit. And it's scary for whoever, whoever has been in this King of Pentacles energy for so long. It's fucking scary, guys. I'm losing my ground. I'm losing my foundation. I was so solid before. And now all of a sudden I'm soft and, and, and malleable and, 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 and flowing in all these different places where I didn't even know I could flow in these different places, mainly because I didn't even know these different places existed. Yeah. I get it. I totally get it. But think about it this way. Think about how much better your life is going to be. How much more exciting, how much more fun, how much more flowy, how much more in tune you will be once you've become comfortable with this integration. Mm. Mm. That is just the just 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 scrumptious, you guys. All right, I'm gonna get your oracle guidance now. We're gonna close this reading with oracle from the light worker today, just like yesterday. Absolutely, 100%. This is this is great. guidance please spirit in terms of this I wanted to say relationship okay so we can talk about this as the relationship between you and your inner feminine here with this king and queen of king of pentacles queen of cups it could be between you and an external counterpart also but this this relation there it is okay this relationship take it as it resonates however you want to describe it we have card number 43 sixth ray of devotion mm. 
Mm-hmm. Here we go. The sixth ray of devotion bestows the qualities of persistence, unwavering focus, and intensity of feeling. It is a gift of the strength to move mountains with your will for what you love. When the sixth ray of devotion appears, you are being given guidance that even if you do not seem to have much worldly power right now, the power of your beliefs can, count, can, count, can conquer <laughs> obstacles. The Archangel Uriel helps you receive the blessing of the sixth ray now. I, I do kind of want to read this whole thing. Maybe not the whole thing, but we'll see. You are receiving a blessing of the sixth ray of devotion. It is serving your soul growth and will help you develop faith in your principles and trust in the power of your beliefs. You will be able to recognize and appreciate the extraordinary strength within you and realize that you have enough willpower to keep working towards your dream, overcoming any obstacle until you are divinely successful. The sixth ray reminds you of the power of love, which can conquer anything and everything. Love is an empowering, motivating force far stronger than fear. Love is the foundation of authentic spiritual devotion. Devotion to the divine empowers us to bear burdens, overcome obstacles, and manifest all manner of beautiful visions in a world that may at first assure us that our dream is not possible. The sixth ray blesses you with spiritual stubbornness and sacred rebellion against any odds. The challenge with the sixth ray is to not be so, not to be, is to, excuse me, let me try that again. The challenge with the sixth ray is to not become so anchored in your beliefs that you become fanatical, judging others because their beliefs are different. You can be unwavering in your adherence to your belief system and yet honor the fact that there are as many paths to divine union as there are people, that the ways the universe calls you home to love are unlimited. If you do not honor this, you may try to pull people from their own path, which can create unnecessary struggle for them and unnecessary karma for you. The best way to honor the blessing and minimize the challenge of this ray is to share your truth with an open heart and an open mind. Share without agenda. For those working with this energy, the power of mind and emotions will come into focus. You may need to channel your emotional and mental power into worthy projects or practice balancing your intensity with lightness of heart and playfulness so you don't become harsh or despairing of others. I'm sorry, or despairing if things appear not to be working out the way you believe they should. Then your faith can remind you love always finds a way. When Archangel Uriel connects with you, a tremendous power, the power of Earth, is brought to your aid. Uriel brings healing energy and an ability to cause real effect in the physical world with your mental and emotional power. Remember, you are here to shine your light. Others can choose to use your light to see by until they are ready to discover their own inner light or not. It's not anything you need to worry about. Simply live your truth, trust in your heartfelt beliefs, and devote yourself to love. Finally, as the sixth ray has a special connection to religion and love, you are asked to hold the healing power of love in your heart for all those who are evolving through a life experience involving religious practice. This can help counterbalance the judgment and fear that exists in the hearts of many towards religions that are not their own or that have been the vehicle through which abuse has taken place. We were just talking about that. Religion on this planet at this time needs love, support, and encouragement to evolve, heal, and grow in whatever way ultimately serves divine love. And I want to say that I have always felt like religion absolutely does have a positive and beneficial place in human society, in the expansion and growth and ascension of the human being. I see it as a stepping stone. You start with organized religion or what we know to be organized religion or some sort of practice like that. And eventually you move your way up until event finally you can start to break free and start to think for yourself and then start to develop your own personal spiritual practice. Okay, this card always reminds me of that. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah, take care. Bye.